Do you know how Korean plutocrats give gifts? Not only do they give limited edition designer bags, they have to fill the bag with cash. This is the only way to make the recipient happy. Yumi felt excited to receive a gift for the first time. The gift giver was also kind enough to say that she would pay the bill first. Yumi could take her time to clean up before leaving the store. Yumi had her first taste of power because her husband was a candidate for mayor of Seoul. The wives of wealthy families were lining up to get in her good graces. So she decided to use this connection to solve her urgent problem of being blackmailed by Anna for 3 billion won. She made a list of the people who wanted to flatter her. There were 45 people who wanted to befriend her. She had more than enough money to get 3 billion won from them. Yumi immediately took action. She started calling them one by one according to the list. She gently said she had some time this afternoon. She said she could meet them at Hanum to Dong. Yumi quickly started collecting money by having afternoon tea. Some had the driver put the bag with the money in the passenger seat. Some people put the money in an inconspicuous cake box. So many ways to put money in the box is also an eye-opener for Yumi. Their life is so easy. Yumi accompanies her husband to various occasions, thus greatly increasing his popularity and support. On the other hand, she is busy going to afternoon tea with the plutocrat's wives. She packs piles of cash into snakeskin bags every night. Yumi felt that too much cash in her hands was like a waste of paper. Sometimes her schedule is so full that she doesn't even bother to change the time and place. <laughs> Yumi's face was almost frouncing with laughter, but she didn't wait to rest for a while. There was a line of plutocrat wives again. Yumi just sat her day there and received 3 billion won, and because she ate too many meals that day, she had indigestion and went to the drugstore to buy medicine. But at that moment, the news was being broadcasted on the TV. The villa in the picture was a place Yumi knew very well. The news broadcast made her think about the identity of the deceased, so she drove past it on her way home. She looked at the crime scene full of police officers and fell deeper into fear. She stepped out of the car, disoriented, but this time, she didn't take the stairs. Instead, she pressed the elevator button. But Yumi still felt horrible when she thought of the real Anna's death. How could the domineering Anna have chosen to end her own life? Just then, her husband, who was at the party, came home and asked Yumi why she was absent from the party today. Yumi said she had to attend class. She knew she was just an eye candy to be used. She had to pretend to be in love with her husband every time she went to a party. These false appearances have worn her out. But then Ji Hoon asked her to quit her school job and focus on spending time with him for the election. Yumi wanted to resist and refuse once. But the next day, a suspension application was sent to her. Yumi knew very well that this must be her husband's tactic. Unable to fight it, she had to sign it. She was reduced to a woman who helped her husband's campaign. A celebrity girl sipping wine by the window. When night falls, the only thing left on the table was a pool of red blood. And it all started when she blackmailed the woman who pretended to be her. Since the death of her wealthy father, Anna's family is not as powerful as it used to be. And she lost 3 billion won due to her incompetence. She's recently divorced and is fighting for the custody of her daughter. Anna, who was raised well, has never cherished anything until this cute daughter came along and made her willing to do whatever it takes to protect her. So she extorted 3 billion won from Yumi, who was pretending to be her. However, because she was too eager, she was exposed to the news of killing herself. But Yumi, who really knows Anna, is keenly aware of the fact that at this time, Although Yumi was no longer threatened by Anna, but she had become a tool for her husband and accompanied him to various events to create a buzz. Yumi wanted to create the image of a perfect wife and perfect family. As her husband's approval rating grew, her sense of crisis grew stronger. She knew that she would be abandoned sooner or later if she became completely subservient. So Yumi doesn't just sit back and wait for the day to come. She knew that her secretary was sent by her husband to spy on her. But a secretary working for a man like her husband must be suffocating. So she prepared a place for her secretary to live nearby. And with empathy, she convinced the secretary to come to her side. She then approached the driver, who had been violently dismissed by her husband not long before. Yumi believed that a driver who had been with her husband for many years would have a lot of secrets that were not known to 
the public, but he signed a confidentiality agreement and refused to talk. 그런 사람이 서울 시장 되면 안 되는 거잖아요. Soon, the news that her husband had an illegitimate child hit the number one spot on the search list. Yumi behind the screen smiling after the news of the illegitimate child was revealed. Ji Hoon was so angry that he made all his secretaries kneel down as a group. He said that he has not even been near a woman since his election campaign. How come now even the news that he has an illegitimate child abroad has been revealed? While he was accusing the secretaries of not doing anything, the news of Yumi's falsified graduation thesis broke out again. The hot list was instantly dominated by the couple's news. Yumi was quickly called to her husband. Just as Yumi was on her way over, the almighty secretaries had found a solution to the public opinion. And Ji Hoon found out through his connections that Yumi was behind the news. He even learned the secret about her posing as a rich woman to get into the high society. What he said afterwards directly shocked Yumi. Until this moment, Yumi really realized the horror of her husband and her little tricks were no match for him. That night, Yumi dreamed of Anna's death where she thought that she had indirectly killed Anna. Yumi shed tears of repentance, but Anna warned her. Yumi then realized that those coveted fame and prestige, you only know that they corrupt and consume your true self when you really have them. The man grabbed his wife by the neck and pinned her against the wall. Only when she was red in the face and gradually unable to struggle did, he let go and left his wife limp in his arms. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. The man rushed to fix his wife's hair and pulled her aside to sit down. The woman immediately wiped away her tears and straightened her posture to engage in socializing. And so Yumi became her husband's puppet. She's all smiles as she accompanies him around the campaign trail. She returns to the car for a moment to catch her breath. At that moment, Ji Hoon handed over the outline of tomorrow's interview. The next day, Yumi gave an interview about her husband's illegitimate child. It Yumi's emotional performance made the reporters on the sidelines start to feel sorry for her. But even though she was so cooperative, Chi Hoon had already thought of abandoning her. Yumi's heartfelt response turned the public opinion around again. Chi Hoon's approval rating also started to rise steadily. Chi Hoon was finally elected as the mayor of Seoul with 54% of the votes on this night. At the same time, Yumi received a phone call that her biological mother who is in a nursing home is critically ill. Yumi was very worried. At that moment, she was forcibly lifted up by her husband and taken into his arms. Amidst the cheers of the crowd, her struggle looked ridiculous. The two of them received the congratulations of the crowd and went back downstairs. Yumi then said her first words of the night. She first congratulated her husband on finally getting what he had wanted. That she said she had to leave now. Ji Hoon, who had just taken office as mayor, didn't want to cause trouble. He pulled Yumi into the elevator. He then sent a secretary to the nursing home. After Ji Hoon achieved his goal and became the mayor, Yumi was no longer useful. So Ji Hoon contacted a foreign mental hospital. He planned to make it a place for Yumi to stay for the rest of her life. He takes Yumi abroad with him on the pretext of visiting his sick son. Before her flight, Yumi receives a phone call and learns that her mother has left her forever. With her heart broken, she makes up her mind. Ji Hoon arrives abroad and takes Yumi's passport on the pretext of renting a car. Yumi also started to suspect her husband's intentions from this moment. In the car, she kept checking her phone and waited for the news from Korea. It turned out that Yumi had already prepared some measures to deal with the situation. She knew her husband would not let her go easily, so she handed over all the evidence she had collected to her senior schoolmate, who was a journalist. It included evidence of her husband's embezzlement and tax evasion. 
She hopes that the reporter will expose her husband's crimes and make him fail completely. By now, Ji Hoon was driving on a deserted road. It's almost the end of everything. He's about to reveal all his plans to put Yumi in a mental hospital. <laughs> Only then did Yumi realize the purpose of the trip. She held back her fear and noticed that her husband was not wearing his seatbelt next to her. Just as he was getting cocky, a deer appeared in front of him. He jerked the steering wheel to avoid it. Yumi also took the opportunity to pull the handbrake at that moment. The car lost control and crashed into a stone pillar. After a few moments, Yumi climbed out of the passenger side. Ji Hoon, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was already stuck in the car. Yumi took the opportunity to take out her passport. Her eyes fell on the deer not far away. She remembered a dream her mother had when she was alive. Maybe this is the last time mommy will watch over Yumi. She struggled to find a signal in the middle of nowhere and wanted to check on the progress of the reporter's report on her husband, but instead, she received a text message from the reporter. She told Yumi that the report had been stopped by her superiors. When she learned that even the law could not punish the bad guys, Yumi chose to execute the bad guys in her own way. She lit her purse on fire and threw it into her car. She wanted to bury her husband, who was a criminal, in the fire. With an explosion, Yumi also finally stopped crying. Her absurd lies and false life finally ended at this moment. Yumi's life was a combination of misery and speculation. She came from a poor background and chose to like to cover up one problem after another after a setback. It is only when she meets an example that is the absolute opposite of her own that her envy and hatred are aroused. Yumi also went down a path of no return. In the end, Yumi lived a life of anonymity. She lives in a small cabin in the countryside compared to the false perfection she had built up through life for the first half of her life. It seems that now she has a real sense of being alive after tearing off the layers of pretense.